Hello and welcome to episode 5 of my weekly portfolio update here on The Last Investor. My name is Dan. Thanks for joining me on this fun and bumpy journey to financial freedom. My goal is to use dividend growth investing strategy to grow my portfolio long term. I invest £200 every week and update you on my experiences through the highs and the lows. I follow four rules in identifying a core group of stocks that I invest in. I then allocate my weekly funds to the ones that drop in value. The lower they drop, the more I allocate my weekly funds to them. Also, by investing weekly, I'm able to follow the market and hopefully I'll make the gains when they go up. But most importantly, those dividends will be instrumental in the growth of my portfolio overall. So today, the topics I want to cover is to give you a portfolio update to tell you what stock allocations I've got for this week and also to talk about the US trade war and the Brexit issues that they've been dug in at the markets recently. So as you can see from the screen, um, the current value of my portfolio is now £1,860.17. I have actually contributed £1,900 in total to date. That means that I have a total loss of £39.83. Um, this week seems to be a better week in comparison to the last um Given the uh, given the drop in the level of my loss from previous from the previous week, um, the stocks all pretty much all of my stocks appear to be in the green. Three I is two point three five percent up. Monday is two point three one percent up. Bellway is one point three eight percent up. Trig zero point eight four percent up. Aviva zero point one three percent up, which is all good. Um, the stocks that remain down are effectively Rio Tinto, which, if you recall from last from last week's um, t- trading time, it was down probably around 10%. So it's now only down 4.73%. So um, there's been almost a 6% um, rise from last week, uh, which is obviously uh, quite good. Um, overall then the last one is BHP and that uh, is only now down uh, 10% over 10.81% overall to date so far as far as my portfolio is concerned so that's quite good overall Um, so as you can see my my portfolio seems to be coming along nicely in terms of allocations for the week, I actually made uh, a lot of allocations through to Aviva. Uh, I think I made about, I purchased about from 30th of August through to about the 4th of September, which is today. I purchased about about 70, 79 shares in total, just to bring my shares up to a total of 104 shares. Um, so it's now gone from pretty much nothing to my third largest holding um, so that that's quite good all of the shares that I've purchased you can see have all been purchased under the average of three three pounds fifty five which is also quite good um, so um, that seems to have worked out well for me um, in terms of Rio Tinto um, I purchased uh, purchased three more shares since the 30th of August which now brings my total to 17 shares um, and the average price has gone down to 44.22 pounds and 22 pence um, it's currently trading at uh, 42 pounds and 12 pence and when you compare that to the very first purchase I had that was at the rate of around 48 pounds uh, the share price was roughly around £48 pounds at that time. So all in all, I seem to have followed that market down and I've been able to bring my average down uh, quite significantly, um, which is also very good uh, going forward. 
um, as I've stayed true to my philosophy and my principle not to buy when the prices are in green but to buy when the prices are in red so that means I've only purchased when when the shares are down um, so to, in order to be able to maintain that lower average um, overall average so that's where I am at the moment um, and uh, yeah I'm just going to carry on uh, with that philosophy uh, just keep buying into these uh, main main stocks that I've got at the moment um, and see where we go from there from time to time I, I continue to keep be on the lookout for any shares that uh, are a bargain um, and if they are then I will be investing in those as well but so far um, these are the ones that I've seen that I'm quite impressed with and I'm quite happy with in terms of them having the right fundamentals and also them being at a, at a discounted value um, and also being good businesses as well so um, so far those are the ones that I've, I've seen because obviously the ultimate aim is to hold these shares of these stocks um, long term so I could see these businesses still being around in 10 20 years time and that's the main that's the main aim to be able to purchase businesses that will be around um, not ones that are likely to hit significant difficulties and that's why I place a lot of emphasis on on um, basically ensuring that the, 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 the fundamentals of the business are really really sound they've got really good balance balance sheets um, the importance of a good balance sheet is to ensure that you know the manage the management of the business are prudent they're prudent in the management of the business um, going forward um, and if that that prudency remains then you know you still you've got a good and safe stock um, there's no point in in purchasing stock where you you don't really understand how the business is being run you can't really understand the logic behind the way the the business is run or how the balance sheet, why why the balance sheet in a particular way or why they've taken out so so much amount of debt and if it's not really clear then how can you predict anything about the business how can you predict the the, the business's outlook for growth if if the way that they run the business isn't even clear to you it, it's going to be difficult to predict if there's consistency then there's more likely to be predictability and that's that's where I aim to look at businesses who have that consistency, hence predictability going forward. Um, but I will come back and touch upon that point. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about about um, the trade war. So um, over the weekend, um, we know that the uh, US tariff came into effect on Sunday, uh, $110 billion uh, uh, of Chinese goods will be subject to tariffs um, and chi China in return has now um, implemented its tariff on 75 billion dollars worth of US goods so the trade war is off and running in earnest um, so obviously the stock markets reacted to that at the beginning of the week um, and it looks like we're in it for the long haul there's still talk from Trump about um, that China will come to the table, they must come to the table, but um, at the moment there doesn't seem to be any sign of them actually coming to any sort of, or even arranging any sort of meetings to come to the table. So a lot of uncertainty is still out there. And the, the real impact for the market in general is the uncertainty. And the longer the the, the trade war continues, the longer there is uncertainty and uncertainty leads to um, people and businesses not willing to commit to investments or reducing their production or trying to adjust to the arrangements that are currently in place in terms of the tariffs and the impact on relative businesses. That, that in turn is going to cause, most likely going to cause a contraction um, in, uh, in the economy. Uh, in various businesses uh, which in, which ho obviously has an impact on the economy as a whole um, similar situation in the UK where we've now got uh, Brexit um, hitting effectively fever pitch we now have a situation where the new Prime Minister uh, is, is hell-bent on trying to get us out get us out of the 
the EU by the 31st of October, uh, trying to prorogue Parliament so that there wouldn't be any parliamentary sit-ins for five weeks in a row. That seems to have backfired because the bill has now been passed through Parliament today, basically um, saying that that uh, no deal has to be taken off the table. Um, so we would not be leaving. We will not be leaving the EU on the 31st of October. That looks like a, a, a dead certain that we will not be leaving on the 31st of October. What seems more certain at this stage is that there is going to be a general election. Um, that is very certain. It looks like it's probably most likely to, to happen this side of 2019. Um, so we will have to wait and see how that goes. Of course, the upshot of that is that uncertainty carries on. So we've got uncertainty in the UK, we've got uncertainty in the US, we've got lots of issues going on around the world. All of this is just going to lead to contraction in global economy and we seem to be sleeping into a recession. Uh, I may have said that in my last video, but that is something that we re really need to be looking out for. Um, so yes, that that's my take on, on, on that at the moment. Um, I think um, we're slowly sleeping into a recession. I wouldn't be surprised if UK UK confirms that we'll be in a recession by the end of this month um, because we get the GDP results for um, for this uh, for this quarter at the end of September, and we'll know whether or not uh, the UK is officially in a recession. It looks more likely than not, but I'm not really here to make a prediction about that. Um, but from what from what seems to be happening, um, we seem to be heading in that direction. What impact is that going to have on the market? Well, we're yet to see, but it seems that that's ultimately going to feed into the stock market. Um, and no doubt um, we will be feeling the after effects in the stocks. There may, there may well be a drop in stock prices further down the line. So that's something to look forward to. Um, and all, all the more reason to be watchful and be vigilant to make sure that you're not purchasing at the top of the market and making sure that you're really picking up only those absolutely great deals. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, Starbucks. Starbucks just come out today. And what they said is that they're going to be carrying out another bout of um, share buybacks. And when I look at Starbucks, I think to myself, really, share buybacks? I mean, how much is the how how much is their shares currently running for? Their shares currently running at a PE of roughly over thirty, so that's a PE ratio, price to earnings of 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 thirty. Um, that's 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 quite expensive already as it is, um, and if they're doing a buyback with a view to pushing that share price up even further, I'm not really sure what it is that they're actually trying to achieve. Um, doesn't make any sense to me. You do a buyback when your when your share price is relatively cheap, not when your share price is exorbitant at the moment. Um, this is exactly what they said. They said, um, so in the context of rapidly appreciating share price, and given that we have the liquidity to do it, we pulled forward those share repurchases and were able to preserve what we had expected by the way of an EPS gross contribution to or from the share repurchases, net of the associated interest expense. Um, sounds like gibberish to me. Um, I'm not really sure if they know what they're doing. When you then look at um, Starbucks's balance balance sheets. You really do have to question why they're doing a buyback because this is a company who, at the moment, has negative equity of negative nine billion dollars. They have um, they 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 have uh, debts of eleven billion dollars as we as we as we as we speak, um, and yet they obviously see couldn't deem it necessary to to have a two billion dollars worth of buyback um you know i'm not really sure what the logic is and what the thinking is and this comes back to my point about prudent management 
um, and and companies being prudent and there's nothing that screams at me that this is a prudent com this this is prudent management a prudent running of a business yes it's a great business um, in terms of the everyone knows about the 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 uh, the, the, the aim of the business we know and this is understandable they sell great drinks hot drinks cold drinks fantastic it's got it's got a good image behind it um but it's not run it doesn't come across as a business that's being well run at the moment and and that's where people need to be cautious it's not just about looking at a business and say, oh yeah, that's Starbucks. Oh, of course it's a great business. Oh, that sounds like a great, I'm just going to buy shares in it. You've got PE ratio of 30 odd, 30 odd. It, when, when a business is effectively running, uh, you know, selling, trading at 30 times its earnings, then you really have to question that um, and say, am I really getting a good deal? Is that really fair value? Okay, yes, you know, you could call it a growth company, um, but how much growth has it actually got? Um, it, it doesn't seem to be growing at the rate of thirty percent. Um, are we expecting the earnings in, in in two or five years' time to to grow by thirty thirty percent year over year um, to be able to justify that PE ratio? I don't know, but um, certainly wouldn't be interested to look into this any further the balance sheet is, is enough to draw enough red flags for me and i would say these are the sort of things that we should be watching out in times where we're heading towards economic you know potential global recession we don't really need the time to be worrying about businesses that are just so muddy and murky when there are other businesses out there which is simple to understand um great balance sheets um, and they're also trading at a discount so those are the businesses to be concentrating on because when those prices drop and when there is a serious correction the likelihood is that you get you get a more significant correction from a company like starbucks than you would from for example a company like one of the ones i've currently got here um Anyway, that's my view and that's my take. Let me know what your views are. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video and please do subscribe if you're new to the channel. Peace.